What's up and welcome back to Talking Oscars. Yesterday we had the PGA Awards, which broke everybody's brains. And now they think the race is over. Done. Solid. I think the, ra the, the race became incredibly difficult now. I think they messed it up for a lot of people. <laughs> I think the race now is, holy shit, what are we doing? What's happening? Uh, what is this? I did not expect them, the Producers Guild of America, to give acknowledgement to both Anatomy of the Fall and Zone of Interest in a year where they actually have an American film that embraces sort of an internationalist take on life with past lives. But they basically gave what some people are thinking might be the Oscar top 10. The problem is the PGAs have never lined up 10 for 10. So, uh, what film is getting snubbed and which film is snubbing <laughs> is the conversation we now need to have. Last year, uh, they, I believe they went eight for 10. They had, if I remember correctly, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and Glass Onion were in here. Um, so, uh, yeah, some, sometimes they, they just, they don't line up the way that they're supposed to. And I was kind of counting on the PGA to pick like the color purple, uh, something that felt a little bit more on brand for them, you know, or, uh, I don't, I don't know, pick something else, uh, air, <laughs> you know, just like literally I thought surely both of the foreign language features would make it into the producers guild of America awards. They did. Um, fuck me. Because <laughs> now we have to ask ourselves the question, well, just because it's never happened before doesn't mean it won't happen. Statistically speaking, okay. Uh, <laughs> we could be having that question with any guild. We could be, we could say that with any awards body, uh, the SAG Awards haven't gone 20 for 20. So maybe this is the year that they get all 20 of them correct and the, the awards line up perfectly. Uh, maybe this is the year that the Golden Globes, you know, that everybody was nominated for a Golden Globe, uh, which would mean that the supporting actor and supporting actress categories translate perfectly uh, as do as let's say, as will the directors, maybe that's the, the maybe the directors also. Um, but uh Although there are like six nominees, so somebody's going to have to drop off. But anyway, uh, not a great comparison. I, I, I take that back. SAG was the better kind of comparison. Uh, but DGA, uh, for example, last year they nominated Joseph Kaczynski, who didn't go on to get a nomination. So they missed one. And that's fine. It's not the same voting body. That's the thing, guys, is none of these, none of these guilds are the same voting body as the Oscars. So, um, they have their little, like, not, uh, committees, you know, you get brought in as an editor, as an actor, a writer, uh, documentarian, whatever it is. Um, when they invite people, they invite them in so that you can speak to the quality within your own thing. And those are, sure, they're in their larger guilds, but they're not it's not their entire guild in the Oscars. Um, I should also point out the fact that SAG's nominating committee, I didn't mention this in my other video, and I'm dereliction of duty, I apologize. The way that SAG nominates, just in case you're confused, uh, is even weirder because they actually, it's not the entire voting body of SAG that nominates. It's a small, uh, sort of like randomly selected membership uh, that changes from year to year. Uh, I know because I've had, I have friends who are in SAG and I've benefited from the year when they were on the nominating committee. Uh, they were like, I have screeners. Do you want to watch? And I was like, oh my God, yes, I do. <laughs> so definitely. Um, so got to see a couple of films that year, but uh, that I wouldn't have been able to see due to theatrical distribution issues. Uh, yes. Anyway, um, it, it's yeah so it, but then uh, every year after this that hasn't been the same thing you know uh it rotates 
So um, on top of that, so it's not even the same, it doesn't even represent the same group of people voting every year, if it makes any sense. So because SAG has such a, a large depth, it's, it's a sampling of SAG uh, to nominate. So, uh, which is why sometimes those precursor awards uh, can go as low as 12 for 20 uh, in terms of matching up. PGA, obviously not all the producers are at the Oscars. Um, so I don't know what to do here, but, uh, I think somebody's getting left out. The question is which film and which film takes its place. Um, if I had to say which films do I think still have a shot at getting nominations at the Oscars, um, my gut instinct says Color Purple is probably the top shot. And it's the only film at Gold Derby. They have basically 11 films. And then once you pick outside of that, everything else has like 100 to 1 odds. So I kind of disagree with that um, because of the love that all of us strangers have at BAFTA. Um, I could see there's a road, there's a path to all of us strangers being a surprise out of nowhere. It's one of the few films that I think could. And I think there's a ch there's an outside chance perhaps for Saltburn. Um, but I do agree that we've sort of whittled down the list to where even the, the people who might might steal a nomination are really low. Um, May, December, I don't think it's a Best Picture nominee. Um, maybe if I had to go, if if I was being forced to do five films, I would go to May, December for four and uh, for five, uh, Society of the Snow, I guess, just because of, of how many, it did match All Quiet for the most um, short lists. So if we were to, to get like a random surprise, that would be bizarre. If instead of like Zone of Interest or, Amer or um, I don't know, Fall, we got Society of the Snow, that would, people's minds would be blown. Um, but I guess, uh, I just don't know. Um, I feel like it's going to probably be color purple, but who does color purple steal? Like which film? It's kind of scary because zone of interest has been doing pretty well. It could be anatomy of a fall, or it could be something we're not even thinking of. It could be something that just underperforms at the Oscars. Um, something like past lives which doesn't have a whole lot of categories that it's up for consideration in and a whole lot of likely nominations. Past Lives basically is looking at probably a Best Picture nominee and a Best Original Screenplay nomination. If we're being really honest about its likely nominees, which puts it really low on the totem pole in terms of where, you know, uh, some other films feel like they're going to, sweep and that they're going to get nominated everywhere which makes them feel safer because uh, well if you're going to have that much love from everywhere else of course you're going to end up getting a picture nomination not that something like maestro which could very well get like five to seven oscar nominations couldn't miss picture but i think it presents a very interesting predicament because I either have to say that the Producers Guild is going 10 for 10 and that they're going to break history here and make a make a new record and the Guild is going to have perfectly projected their category, which just doesn't happen. Or I have to figure out which film is subbing out for the color purple and is it the Zone of Interest? The Zone of Interest does sometimes feel like it's the 10th film, but it also kind of feels like it's been building momentum. It's kind of been showing up everywhere it's supposed to, which is the problem for a lot of these films. If Color Purple had missed out on a SAG nomination, I'd be less inclined to say it has a chance at, at surprising uh, because it basically, it doesn't quite have the same precursors as everywhere else. But um, that SAG Ensemble nomination certainly helps a lot. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I got, it. I'm, I'm, I'm torn. 
Um, the reason I listed some of the others was because of their love elsewhere. Um, all of the Strangers in Saltburn did quite well with BAFTAs. So if their love was coming from the British side, uh, that's why I think either one of them could surprise. And like I said, I kind of begrudgingly picked the other two. So don't hold me to those. Uh, I'm really focusing on three films here. Uh, all of the Strangers would feel like the most pleasant surprise for so many people um most unlikely candidate to actually show up it's struggling to get any nominations to be totally honest it's not really guaranteed anywhere um it would have probably gotten an adapted screenplay nomination uh had barbie been correctly labeled original screenplay um, I think to say that simply because simply something is an adapted screenplay because it's adapted on a product is asinine. Uh, Air was about the Air Jordans. Uh, I, I don't, you know, like it's just when you write something about a product, like it's just, it's, it's kind of weird to use that as your also biopics you know what i'm saying like what are you doing what are you doing with biopics because then inherently every single biopic in some form is adapted because they're adapted from somebody's life so uh you can't we can no longer have an original biopic um they, there's nothing of substance other than the fact that barbie was created by mattel and they wrote this film uh, it wasn't adapted from any previously written work. It's not adapted from Barbie lore. It's a completely different spin on the character than, um, and, and a completely fresh take on that. So it doesn't use anything other than the existence of these toys. Uh, they could have done this with any toy. They could have made a new Transformers movie that was like this uh, and just subbed out I mean, obviously, it wouldn't have been able to do the female empowerment stuff, but you could have subbed it out. So had they stuck with the Writers Guild has declared an original screenplay. They're the ones that know what's up, you know. Uh, <laughs> but at the Oscars, it's adapted. So I think that's where all the strangers lost. It's, it's now it's a maybe. It's like, a, I don't know, maybe I'll get it. Yeah, so... To say it might get into Best Picture, it all depends on... It, it did get a lot of love from BAFTA. Uh, its entire cast got a nomination, including Jamie Bell, who wasn't really tracking anywhere. So, um, yeah. Uh, it, it, if BAFTA loves that film, if it's leading BAFTAs, like if that ends up getting the most BAFTA nominations, there's a chance. I'm not going to say there isn't. So that's why it's here. And Saltburn, same way. Um... Remember, they did uh, shortlist Jacob Elordi. So that film did overperform. Uh, not just did it, did it have Barry Keegan and Rosamund Pike, who both were nominated at the Golden Globes, but they shortlisted Jacob Elordi. So uh, I, there's a little bit more love there, too. So Saltburn were to also overperform at the BAFTAs. Um, I think there's a path for that as well. Uh, it all depends. And then all of those British nominees all of the people who overlap into our Oscars would have to love it enough to put it as their first place, really, because it's ranked, uh, best picture votes ranked, so you'd have to be first place. Um, and those are two films, by the way, that people do really love when they do love them. There are people who absolutely, really, truly do love All of Us Strangers and really, truly do love Saltburn, um, the, the divisiveness of it. Uh, there are people who have really, truly embraced Saltburn. Are they putting it at number one over perhaps, you know, the obvious frontrunner of Oppenheimer um, or Poor Things? I've seen a lot of lists, and it is true that most of the time Oppenheimer or Poor Things is at number one. But if people are being really honest and really passionate, you can see a lot of those films where Oppenheimer is number two or number three and Poor Things is number two or number three. And then they have a different number one choice because it's the film they are truly, truly passionate about. My number one is not Oppenheimer or Poor Things this year. Um, I haven't released my top ten. And uh, I've seen people go for like Godzilla minus one. 
as their number one because it is whatever film you feel like. I've seen Barbie. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's... Everybody has a different number one. We can all acknowledge that Oppenheimer is a great film. And if it's in the number two spot for everybody, it's probably still getting a nominee. You know what I'm saying? But it's that's why it has. is because people don't really rank it low. It's not like missing top 10 lists altogether but uh yeah you might be passionate about a different film so is that film the color purple i don't know i i honestly don't know so but i am deeply concerned a lot more than a lot of the writers who a lot of these articles and columns are like well the race is over i'm like but they've never lined up before guys <laughs> Are you actually saying that that's good, that that's what that's going to be and that we're all okay with that? There's nothing weird about that cuz that's not what happens. So I'm actually the complete opposite when the opposite direction. So I made a video about it. Um I don't know what to do anymore. Uh cuz this would have been the 10 that I would have projected. I was willing to say that the color purple would have lost out because last year um I got screwed. And that was one of the hesitations that I had uh, in projecting Best Picture was I went with RR along with All Quiet on the Western Front. I thought RR was doing a one hell of a job of campaigning itself. It was not in the international feature race. I thought people would vote for it. It had a campaign. There were people who truly loved RRR. Um, and I thought because of those first place votes that it would slide into the 10th spot. And somehow Triangle of Satinus did. So... Uh, I lost because I thought that the best picture race could sustain two foreign language features. Now it would kind of be considered three with past lives. It feels like a lot. And I'm, I'm concerned that it's even possible that Anatomy of a Fall is the spoiler here or that past lives and that zone of interest does make it in. But then at, at what cost, you know, um, is it anatomy of a fall that ends up missing out instead of zone of interest? And then color purple takes that spot. Uh, I'm, I really wish the PGA had been a little bit more on brand. <laughs> um, this is quite surprising. I suppose I should say the animation nominations, um, even though uh, the Annie Awards are a little bit better precursor for that. It was interesting about the Annie nominations was that they did not nominate Disney. Uh, <laughs> they left that out completely. Um, so it's been good news for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which now has both a PGA nomination and an Emmy nomination. So um, it's looking a lot better for a nomination. But um, yeah, the PGA did pick up Elemental. Uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, it was Spider-Man, Boy and the Heron, Elemental... Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Nimona, I believe, were the were animated. I know Nimona was Annie Awards, which is why I'm hoping I'm, it's not clouding my judgment. Um, so, uh, Susan May also picked up Annie, which is why it's it's still in the consideration. But a lot of the films that people have been trying to push this year that are sort of fringy awards, like The Peasants and Robot Dreams, just aren't getting the nominations. It's Suzume that's that's the more fringy candidate if one was to, to get in. Uh, Netflix has a problem uh, between Nimona and Chicken Run. Nimona is performing pretty well. Chicken Run hasn't really, except at the BAFTAs. So if they're pushing Nimona a little bit harder, it could get in over Chicken Run, um, but uh, I think we're looking for sure at Boy and the Heron, Spider-Man, I think, I, I still think Elemental is a safe bet, it's Pixar, um, I, I, sure, Annie's didn't nominate it, but then again, I would be predicting that the Annie's would go five for five, I don't think that's going to happen. So uh, I'll go ahead and say those three, and I think the final spots are going to be some combination of Ninja Turtles, Suzume, uh, Chicken Run, uh, maybe, I guess, Outside Chance Super Mario Brothers, but mm, a really outside chance. Anyway, that's it. 
Um, that's all I got. So I will uh, see you guys on the other side.